on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. A good opportunity tonight to get, to get some good information. We're talking about caring for an aging loved one. Perhaps you have a mother or father at home and you are caring for them, you're responsible for them. What are some things you can do to plan for that, to help pay for some of the things that they may be facing, whether it's nursing home care or long-term care? Again, what are some of the things that, that you can do um, to make all of that go a little more easily? We wanna hear some of your stories. But we're happy to have with us Tim Takis, an elder law attorney. Come on off and thank you Absolutely. so much for being here once again. Glad to be back. Uh, to answer our questions, yeah. I always start by asking, what have you seen in your office? What have I seen lately? Yes. Who's coming through the door? What, what are you seeing? Actually, we're, we're seeing a little bit more estate planning, maybe perhaps than normally that we do. Estate planning, we're talking about people that are walking into our office who are in their late 50s, their 60s perhaps, you know, and they're starting to thinking about, well, we need to maybe doing some more planning, which in a way is kind of gratifying because, you know, as, as I've seen my practice evolve over the last 20, 25 years, we were seeing a lot of elderly people, or at least their families coming in, you know, when people were, say, maybe already needing extended care in a nursing home. But certainly we're seeing, in the last few years anyway, many more people that are coming in who really kind of want to get a jump on things, mm -hmm. you know, and that's great. They want to know. plan ahead. They want to plan ahead. Right. I've often asked you, what's the biggest mistake people make? And you say, well, they don't, they don't call. They don't, they don't, yeah, they don't plan. Have, yeah, exactly. They have no plan. Right. So in that case, at least they have a plan. Right. Now, it, it, that would also indicate they have some assets, yes. which is a good thing. Right. And, and people that are looking at retiring and that kind of thing, what, what, what are some of the things they need to know? I'm talking about Social Security. I had someone ask yeah. me, you know, what, what are the, the situations with retiring and, and Social Security? A lot of people depend on that, and that's just yes. not enough. That's not enough, right. And one of the things that we say is, is that, you know, if, if you start planning for your retirement, you know, when you're going to give your notice next week, you know, <laughs> it's not like it's too late. But there are things that maybe you should have been thinking about over the last, you know, maybe three or four or five years before you retire. So, for instance, let's say you're 58 or 59 years old and you're going, well, you know, uh, how long, you know, you're having a conversation at the dinner table with your spouse, how long should I work? You know, then it's like, well, so what are the sort of things that you need to know? One is, of course, is, or I sh should say, of course, but like for us to do this every day, is, is that one of the major expenses or risks that people have as they as they age or, or they're aging you know is the cost of their long-term care right yeah uh, and so it's uh, I, the, you can read all the kind of statistics two hundred three hundred thousand dollars that people make unreimbursed medical expenses or long-term care expenses during their lifetime you know after they retire so how do you insure against that you know, and I often say is is that if you are thinking about retiring, even before you're retiring, uh, look at look at very carefully at long-term care insurance. You know, is that a good fit for you? Recognize that you don't want to buy it before you know what, when you need it, because when you need it, you're not going to be able to qualify for it. Right. Because it's what we call underwritten, which means that you have to meet medical health health test. Yeah, and one statistic I saw was maybe one-fourth or one-third of persons who are age 65 are not going to be able to qualify for long-term care insurance. Wow. Medically. Okay. Medically. Right. You know, and that's a pretty sizable number. for. And that's just at 65. That's at age 65. That's a fairly young group. That's a fairly young group. Second is, is under, you know, think about what Medicare can do for you and what it could not do for you. Recognize that there are people that when you retire, you turn age 65, you are automatically eligible for Medicare. Now, maybe you already are work, maybe you are still working and you have employer coverage. You are still a Medicare beneficiary, but you have other coverage. Now, some people don't know that. You know, and that's one of the things that, it, particularly if you're working for a larger company, talk to like the HR department, human resources, find out what retire health health benefits your company has. Do you have to pay for them? Are they provided to you uh, as a part of you know for w working for the company for so many years? You know, don't take that stuff for granted. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and then of course the third thing that sort of is the, you know, looking at health, looking at um, long-term care. You also look at income. You know, and that's a social security question that a lot of people have. So, you know, and we can. I know we. I think we have a. We have somebody calling in, but you know, that's a social. Sec you know, we can talk about. We can actually talk in great depth, I guess, about <laughs> Social Security, which we did about for five minutes before we went on the air. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so okay, we, so yeah, we can maybe get into that. Let's, we'll go to this call. Yeah. Let's go to Wayne. Hello, Wayne. Hi. Hi, go right ahead. Yeah, I uh, appreciate taking the time. Uh, I used to be a life insurance agent for American General about 15 years ago, and they first introduced what they call long-term uh, policy where you purchased it and it would help you if you had to go into a nursing facility when you became older. Uh, my first question was, why would anybody need a policy when they have family that's there to take care of them? And the more they talked about it, they said, well, if you sell this, you get a higher commission and it's an ongoing thing, it's a new thing going. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. he said, I can't sell this. Right. So I get a high commission. I said, it's up to the family to take care of family members, and I can't see an insurance policy doing what a family can do. Right. So when y'all talk about this long term, it's uh -huh. something I don't agree with because I'm saying that's what family's for. They're supposed to take care of their family. Right. So that's the way I feel. Right. Okay. Now, thank you, know, you Wayne. Right. Um, Shall I comment? Yes, I think you should. Okay. I mean, he didn't have a question, but, you know, that, but, okay, so that is true. There are a lot of family members out there who feel like it is their duty, you know, to take care of their loved one. Um, sometimes it's their legal obligation if it's a spouse. But a lot of children are, you know, feel like it is something that they should do, and sometimes they feel like it is a duty. You know, and it's been expressed to me a lot of times. Family members come in, or children come in, and say, "Well, you know, mom took care of me when I was a little girl, you know, and I want to take care of her." You know, and I think, I mean, that's that's fine. I, I, that's laudable right. you know, that they would do that. Um, now, having said that. Um, that's not always possible. Sometimes family members aren't available. They're not, um, maybe they're not in the area. Maybe they're not at liberty to come back, you know, if they're living outside of the area. Uh, sometimes children are not well themselves. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, and I will often say is it's great that family members will step in. And frankly, long-term long care insurance doesn't pay for everything. You know, it's not like that it's not like long-term care insurance is going to be a replacement you know for the care that a, that a child or other family member would provide right you have to meet certain medical tests in order for the long-term care insurance to pay but think about it as also part of one's backup plan and also I think another aspect of that too is is that yes children believe think of that but I'm gonna guess is that a lot of us who are baby boomers like me we would not really want our children to do that. I was going to say it. I bet there are a lot that feel that's placing a burden on their children. Yeah. And they would maybe want to buy this insurance right. so that their children have more options, yes. I guess. Yes. And it also gives the older person options as well because, you know, there's, you know, there is money and sometimes people need more help. Um, you know, and I think that's is exactly right is, is that, you know, it, it, what it gets down to, I mean, the, ultimately what it is, is that if you have an aging parent or you are an aging parent or an aging person, you know, who is watching the program, is have the conversation. You know, if you're a, if you're a child and you think that, you know, it's time to have a conversation with your parent and say, okay, what do you expect for us to do? What do you expect for me to do? You know, and then you, you have that honest conversation about, you know, look, I can't do what you're asking me to do, or maybe I will, and then, then see what the parent thinks. The time to buy that, if you were going to buy this long-term insurance, you said 25% of people age 65 wouldn't even qualify. Right. When do you buy it? Would, would you buy it 
you don't buy it at age 40, right? Well, actually you can. A lot of a lot of policies now are sold as employer benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, actually an employee benefit. So you work for say a state or a federal government. I know in particular the federal government has had a life had a long-term care insurance program for a long time. In fact, most you know, there's there are very few companies now that actually sell what we call standalone policies. In other words, where, like for instance, me, my company, I, we, our firm does not have a long-term care insurance benefit for our employees. Uh, I have to go out into the marketplace and get one, and, and there are very few companies now that are offering that. Right. You know, so it, basically, if, if, if it's an employee benefit, think very seriously about taking that benefit. Sometimes you can get it for like very little if almost no cost, particularly depending on what your age is. Mm -hmm. That might just be something that employee, employers have, you know, as carrots to keep people, you know, uh, you know, employ, good, they make some happy, right. happy employees. Yeah. All right, why don't we take a break? Okay. Um, and if you want to call, there's the number, 615-737 plus 615-737-7587. We want to hear from you. Any stories you may have about caring for a loved one who is aging, a mother, a father, whatever, um, Tim Tagus will answer your question or comment. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.